welcome back to our discussion on the Nativity icon. As we get closer and closer to celebrating the Nativity of Christ, we kind of approach along with the Magi um, on their journey. I'm going to talk about the wise men or the Magi today. And the word Magi actually comes from the Greek magi, which means astrologer or magician. Interestingly, they are traditionally known to be Persian rulers who were philosophers, um, practiced medicine, and pagan priests. Um, they were skilled in natural sciences and, and well versed in them. And we also hear from our from the Eastern tradition that the Apostle Thomas baptized them eventually and they became Christians. And the, the saints, uh, they bear the names Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthasar. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but those are the names that I found for the Magi. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a juxtaposition with the shepherds. I was blessed to talk about the shepherds and who were, you know, more the salt of the earth people who were called by God and an angel appeared to them. And now these Magi who are traditionally pagan, um, not Jewish Israelites uh, coming up for the from the traditional worship of God through the Israelite people. Um, yet they had the humility to follow the star. So they studied astrology and were obviously curious about this wondrous star that was not having the same kind of trajectories that other stars had, um, learned about prophecies that a king would be born um, and this star would lead, this, lead them to this king. Um, so I did some searching on what the fathers had to say about the Magi and the stars. And I really, uh, really love what St. John Chrysostom had to say. He said that the star was kind of like the pillar of fire for the Israelites. Um, it wasn't a natural star. It acted differently and it was a supernatural power. And he, he and other saints kind of allude to this being the Holy Spirit. It would stop and go, it would, it went from um, south to north or north to south instead of east to west, like most stars. So it just wasn't moving the same way. Um, also, it was shown during the daytime so that they could follow it. And stars typically don't have that kind of brightness to show um, where to go. Plus, it came and settled right over where the baby Jesus was born. So I'm put in mind of another creature that was utilized by the Holy Spirit at, at another theophany um, when Jesus was baptized, when the dove ascended upon Jesus and signified that this was the son of God and the same way the Holy Spirit used the star. The other thing that I think is really amazing about this and beautiful is that God condescends to what we're interested in and draws us in from there. So these wise men were wise enough to follow what they were studying and curious enough, but they were also humble. They brought gifts. So they were Kings. They were well-respected. They were the, at the top of the caste system, um, but they came and humbly bowed down before the baby who was the King. There was something in them that was humble enough to recognize this glorious child's birth. Um, so I guess I'm put in mind that, again, natural things kind of lead us if we have humble hearts and the right mind to be open to where God leads, that he can draw us further in. St. John Chrysostom actually says that, that they had a certain level of wisdom, but he elevated their wisdom when they met Christ. And I just wanted to share a story that happened to me um, in liturgy one day recently, it was on the 4th of July. So I'm chanting and my son, Michael, who has special needs is sitting next to me at the chant stand. We are right by the door that exits where the people, where the altar servers come out for the processions. And I'm singing the Trubic hymn and didn't realize that the altar servers did not shut the door. Now, Michael has this practice of chasing light and he chases light all over our house. Like he likes to see the way the light reflects on his little shiny beads. He just, he'll move furniture to get to the best light. Like he just chases the light. So 
he's dangling in the light that's coming out of the altar um, because that's where the window, the east window is coming in. And as I kind of am aware of it, that he's moving toward the altar, but I'm singing the trubic hymn, so I can't really do much about it. And so I'm like, he's gone. And he's in the altar and sitting in there and happy as a clam because he found the most beautiful light in the altar. And I'm trying to coax him out with other beads and it's just not happening. So the altar servers come back from the procession and I watch as my child looks at me and the door shuts and he's in the altar with them. And it was actually quite beautiful because it was his like kind of autonomy that took over and he was following that light closer to God. Now he might not have seen that light as being God's light. He was following the light, but I know in my heart, he was drawn in um, by a greater light. And I just thought that that reminded me when I was thinking about the Magi in the star, that story really struck a chord with me. I love that story. Yeah. I don't, I have nothing to add to this. That was just beautiful. Yeah. I think you covered all the bases and more than I have ever heard before. I didn't expect to get so excited about the Magi. I kind of love the shepherds, but this was pretty cool um, learning about them. I appreciate the connection that you made between the shepherds who are simple folk, uneducated, and the Magi who are very well educated and revered and kind of gives a universal message of invitation that the gospel is for everyone whether one is educated or not educated and and also while you were speaking it occurred to me that kind of a a missionary or universal role that the magi play that christ isn't only for the jewish people obviously he fulfills the old testament but his message is for everyone, for all the world. And so to draw from the Magi from another part of the world who were not Jewish and to welcome them and to invite them in, you know, kind of extends the, the gospel message and makes clear that Christ is for all people. So I never thought of the Christian, the Christmas icon as kind of a missionary tool, but it, it does give that message that it's not only for the Jewish people or for the fulfillment of the Old Testament, but um, it, it's for all people. So really, really great insight. I appreciate what you offered today. Actually, what's interesting about this is that only the Gospel of Matthew talks about the Magi. Um, and the Gospel right. of Matthew is traditionally for the Jewish people. Right. So Matthew right. wanted his people, his, he was a Jew. He wanted his people to know that Christ came for all people. He was, he was intentional right. about bringing in that the Magi came to. That's a great point. Yeah. Where you think it'd be for Luke, because Luke is more for Gentiles and for outsiders. So that's really significant that it would be in Matthew. That's great. And it's interesting too, that, drawing in from the ox and the donkey too, and one signifying the Gentiles, the ox symbolic of the Gentiles and um, the donkey being symbolic of, I'm sorry, the ox of the Jews and the, the, uh, the donkey of the Gentiles. And even though the animals are not part of the story, you've got the, the message twice in this icon, somehow the church in its wisdom, twice in this icon, wanted to give this message that Christ is for everybody. Right, right. Wow. Well, I was thinking the same thing, Brother Alex, like while you were talking, Melanie, that the Magi, is ac- they're actually almost more remarkable than the shepherds that they show up because the shepherds had a direct message from heaven telling them, you've got to go see this baby. I mean, how could they deny that the angelic host and all their glory? Whereas the Magi were just following, they, they studied the stars and they've just decided to, you know, decide if this prophecy was true and follow the star all the way. And I, I heard somewhere that their journey was really long. Like it wasn't like a couple days. It was a really long journey, Like they didn't show up when the shepherd showed up. They came like much later, Mm -hmm. which is even more remarkable. Yeah. 
They had mm-hmm. quite a journey and even that devotion to find this. I mean, they brought gifts to this king. They went to King Herod first, right? To say, we want to offer gifts to your king, to your people's king. Um, so they were humble and they, you know, all, the gifts is something else to talk about too. The gold, frankincense and myrrh, the, how that represents um, that they knew this was go- a godly king. Um, gold is for a king frankincense is only offered to God and myrrh is offered um, to anoint a special king and also at people's burial. So, I mean, there's so much with them magi. Um, Something also with them, I feel like, because I mean, I know it was different back then studying the stars. It was, that was all they had, but now there's such a negative connotation with astrology and that kind of, that kind of thing, especially among Christians. But I think it's interesting because like you were talking about, they were, you know, they were not Jews. They were Gentiles or pagans or whatever they were, but somehow God still revealed himself through their practice. It wasn't even like the angels came and told them through their own practice that we don't, wouldn't necessarily even agree with. They were led to Christ. And I think that says something about how Christ can speak to those, even those people that we think, you know, aren't living in the right way or doing the right things. Interesting. Right. It reminds me of St. Justin. I think it was St. Justin, the martyr who talked about the seeds of truth in each philosophy. So all philosophies have seeds of truth and everything under heaven is created by God. So there it's imbued with his grace, right? So he's everywhere present and filling all things. Um, So he just, you know, if we don't squash his energy, it's there. It's everywhere. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Melanie, for this presentation. We look forward to seeing everybody next week.